Father, may I ask for, for your own story, uh, where you were born, and, and kind of the journey of your own life? From an Orthodox point of view, I am a very normal person. I was born in an Orthodox family, and I inherited from my fathers. Uh, they didn't teach me religion. In fact, we don't believe too much in teaching, in intellectual. You, you cannot uh, have God uh, learning about God. Uh, you, God is alive. You live it. And in my family, we lived the faith in God. We experienced uh, Sunday school for us. If you go in Romania, you don't find Sunday school or in Russia. We don't know what is that Sunday school. Sunday school is when mom takes the child in her arms and goes to the icon of the mother of God and, look, mom, this is Jesus Christ. This is the, the mother of God. This is St. Nicholas. That is our Sunday school. And in the family, we have everything because education, Christian education is a training. It's not, it's not a, a teaching to learn what to, to teach. Uh, you grow in you experience that. It was very serious for us. Our life in the family, I, sure, uh, uh, maybe my family was a little uh, special, so to say, because my mom knew the Psalter by heart. She, she, all 150 Psalms, if I know half of them by heart now, is from my mom, not from the school not from the Theological Institute that doesn't uh, teach you prayers. She it's, must have been a very devout woman to have Well, been. she was. Uh, she was. And my father, the same thing, because my father provided to her all these books and some of the liturgical books. And we lived in the family. We prayed together. I was uh, uh, no discussion about that. Uh, the time of prayer came, we were kneeling, we were farmers, you know, and we had this time. Uh, maybe in an industrial world like uh, today is a little more difficult. I recommend to people who come to this monastery at least at night before going to bed to have a couple of minutes to be together as a family in prayer. So uh, we, we lived in prayer, uh, and the preparation for Sunday liturgy for us started Friday night. Uh, Saturday we didn't work. Saturday was for cooking, and because uh, Sunday never we cooked in our family. Never. It was just warming the food and, and uh, uh, just uh, reading a good book or, uh, from the scripture, from the psalm in a spiritual discussion or practical discussion, what to do tomorrow, or, uh, these things were. So it was a normal Orthodox family in my respect. We were all in church and uh, the Orthodox services, no, they are pretty long. And uh, the children were with parents there. We didn't separate the children in the Sunday school during the liturgy. Uh, and only the adults were in church to have a crying room for the little ones. So, no, all the children were crying. There was a noise in church because this is the church is people of God. It's, it's, uh, that's, oh, they are. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is the people of God. It's the church. Uh, children have the same uh, rights as we have because they are baptized. We don't believe that uh, members of the church. Uh, are enlisted where uh, they have to pay dues to the church. No. If we are baptized, we are members of the church. We go to any church. In fact, in, uh, in Russia, or in Romania, or in Greece, we don't have uh, 300 members of the parish or 400. No, nobody counts them. Uh, they come in church. They take communion. If they, we ask them, did you confess? Or, yes, to my priest. Where my priest? Oh. 1,000 miles ago, it's okay, come to the chalice. They are, uh, there is no formalistic, organized parishes. The church is alive, doesn't uh, depend on the number of members. And so we were in church all the Sundays, and uh, uh, all the days of our, we had a corner, an icon corner in our house with a oil lamp uh, burning all the time there, and uh, uh, some shelves with uh, Holy Scripture and uh, some prayer books and other books. I remember that when I was five, I learned 
to write not uh, the Latin alphabet, uh, even if Romanian they have Latin alphabet, we are Latin people, but uh, we get a Slavonic influence. I, I learned first to read Slavonic, the archivist of, uh, of Mary Magdalene. Yeah. And uh, what our parents, uh, who were not uh, intellectuals, they were farmers, and uh, they, mom showed me the word God. Then I discovered God everywhere in the book, and I, I learned very fast to, to read. Then this is uh, uh, other word, and I discovered it. Well, uh, they were very attentive with us, but especially they were very attentive to keep us close to them. And as children, sure, we were very active. Uh, we, uh, in our family, eight children. Imagine eight children, and to have uh, ten people for three meals a day was uh, very hard work. But mom was uh, cooking there. We were in the kitchen, and she was uh, uh, singing a psalm. We heard that. We were playing on the floor. And uh, when we did something, uh, she disciplined us to go to read uh, three psalms or four psalms, which was a very good discipline, in fact. So it was a family full of love and faith, and uh, it was a beauty. We had choir in the family. Did you know then that you would be a priest? No, uh, we didn't. Uh, we didn't think about that. We had the monastery very close to to our house there, and uh, uh, the monks influenced very much the whole village. Because we consider that uh, monasticism is not something else. In fact, we all are monastics. We have all the inner monasticism. Uh, when Jesus said, take your cross and follow me, or if you love mother, father, uh, sons and daughters, and uh, brothers and sisters more than me who are not worthy of me, Jesus didn't speak to monks because there wasn't, no monk at that time. He spoke to everyone. And um, take your cross and follow me. Obedience. These are virtues in the family. We have to listen to each other, to obey each other. Uh, humility, the same thing. Uh, confession. Well, the virtues, monastic virtues, are in fact belong to everybody. Because be uh, perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. This is addressed to all of us. There was no monastery at that time. Jesus didn't speak to monks, speak to everybody. So this monasticism, in fact, is in each one of us. Uh, what the monks have uh, uh, more is outer monk. You know, we have this uh, habit and uh, uh, outer monasticism and we don't marry because we are the the army of the church the soldiers of the church we are at the disposal of the bishops and the, when the church needs somebody uh, we go immediately uh, we were sent here to open this monastery three sisters from pennsylvania came uh, when i was in romania in 1968 they sent me to brazil not a married priest because there was no church there, no house, nothing. Um, I sent there because we had two missions there. So, uh, the, the, in fact, we all are monastic. So um, the monastery influenced in a good uh, the, the sense uh, our village there. But I didn't uh, think at that time to become a monk. What, what brought you, what was <coughs> the moment when you knew that that was your call. Well, I studied the seminary. I studied the seminary in the Theological Institute in Bucharest, and um, uh, I studied the, 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 at the university in Bucharest uh, to be a, a teacher of uh, Romanian language and literature, and I started being a teacher in a high school in Bucharest. When the communism came, uh, they didn't like my method because uh, uh, they introduced uh, Marxist interpretation of everything, everything, Marxist materialistic interpretation. I didn't want to lie my my students. So I continued until they arrested me. So, uh, and I was civilian at that time. I was not a monk. I was not the first 
five years in prison, I was uh, not a monk or a priest, a clergyman. But even, even as a layman, your faith grew in prison? Well, in prison, and that first period, prison, uh, first uh, imprisonment was uh, the phenomen, phenomena Pitesht. Yeah. Pitesht. Yeah, I was not a clergyman when I was in Pitesht. And that was very interesting. Thank God that it happened. Uh, there are things that uh, happen in Pitesh that you, American people, you cannot understand. And uh, sometimes, sure, it uh, seems to you unrealistic, impossible. But if you read Solzhenitsyn, and uh, especially if you read anti-humans about Pitesh, this prison uh, in which I, I was for five years, you understand that communism is uh, not a normal society. You are normal people. You don't know what is to be afraid, what is to control your thoughts, and you are to be afraid what, uh, what uh, word you can utter today that could jeopardize your future tomorrow. Or um, uh, in communism, if you tuned your radio set to BBC, uh, London to close the doors, to lock uh, the doors and the windows, to, to go around the house and to see uh, if somebody doesn't listen to that, uh, or uh, uh, to be educated uh, as a child. Don't tell anybody what we are doing at home because they will put you in prison. You don't know this situation. American people are not afraid of everything, and thank God that they are free. So uh, uh, I say that you are normal society. We are not who pass through communism. We remain with something. And especially later when I became a clergyman, because they put me twice in prison. You know, in Romania, if you were in prison, you... Uh, are already a candidate, and they give you some vocation, but they they take you once again, until the Patriarch of Romania said you have to leave the country, because even in the uh, free uh, state, uh, when I was not in prison, I never uh, had a, an Easter or a Christmas outside. They arrested me on the holidays all the time, so. Patriarch Justinian said, "You, I have to, to, to send you to Brazil to just to get rid of." And they um, uh, was not easy because eleven times they said no to the government, and the patriarch insisted. Father, you mentioned before about Pitesht. Pitesht, yeah. Pitesht. Could you explain a little bit of of what happened there and what happened to people who were there? Uh, well. Uh, in communism, there were some special prisons uh, which were laboratories, so to, to, to call them, uh, laboratories in which they believe that they can create a communist personality. And they used all the methods. Uh, for example, hospital for mental diseases. Uh, they came with psychiatrists. The doctors were very important. Communist doctors experimented in Russia. They came to give you special drugs and to say, okay, you are crazy because you are not communist, or you are crazy because you believe in God, or look, look at you. Uh, and uh, Pitesh, uh, this special Prisons were for intellectuals only, and not all intellectuals. The old people for them were, uh, you know, condemned to disappear. The children, because we have special imprisonment for children, for high school students, they were educated in the communist materialistic doctrine, they were working, they were reading books and so on. But the students in the universities, and I was one of them at that time, uh, those who were graduate, but they were until 35 years of age, uh, between 25, 35 years of age, they made this Pitesh uh, prison to transform their personality because they were a, an intellectual force and um, uh, to change their mentality. And they used everything, experiences. For example, they used the Pavlovian psychology 
that of uh, uh, conditioned reflex, you know. They repeated, repeated things in your ear. Uh, just to tell you something practical, uh, we had... Um, I lost, we all lost the notion of time. I remember in my room, it was a big hall there, a room with uh, the beds one on top of the other. On 6th of December started everything with a shock. With a shock, this was a physical torture that we were under the bed. So well, within five minutes, full of blood and everything. But that is nothing. That is bearable. Um, that was the shock to start. And uh, I lost the notion of time. I knew that spring came and Easter came and Palm Sunday and everything for what they were doing there. They took the prisoners and uh, they played some some uh, uh, some plays, so to say, uh, lit liturgically, because all of them were orthodox. And this was not done by the official uh, officers of the prison. They put the students to torture each other, because that was the method. They turned them against each no, other? They took one group who disappeared from for half a year, and they came completely brainwashed and uh, he, and uh, they said, we don't want to to die in prison. They promised to them, if you do this, you will be liberated. That was a lie because nobody was liberated. And they put them to torture their own colleagues in prison. So the prison was in the hand of one of the, the, the prisoners there. We didn't see the director of prison and uh, nobody there. So, uh, and they started to uh, gather you are obligated to write down everything since you are, you remember, five years of age and so on. It was a total confession. The devil has his own confession, you know. And uh, there was a position, a special physical position in which you remember everything. That was, this was the position. Six months I was there. You and would just have to sit there? Exactly. Or? And when you went to the... the for the necessities there in the room uh, was no bathroom there. It was just a, a barrel there, and you went there. They were leading you there, and uh, with scornfully and uh, with all kind of, uh, of uh, things that cannot be even expressed. And they used liturgical terms because these people were orthodox too, but they were converted, not converted, was demon, demonized now. And they, uh, for example, they used the words of prayers but with dirty words, but in the same rhythm as the prayer in church. We say, Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal, have mercy on us. They they used, uh, I can in Romanian tell you, but uh, it's uh, impossible to be translated because they are dirty words in the same rhythm. Just to create a shock, what was the strength, uh, the, the, their point? To keep yourself at the limit between normal and abnormal. And nobody can stay here, you know. You have to say yes one day or not. And there were people who said not. And this is interesting, that all those people who strongly believed in God, they, there is inside of uh, men a point that cannot be controlled, and that was their failure. Even those who were brainwashed, they, they came back. When they moved us in a forced labor camp, seeing the nature, the birds, they, they, uh, they were rehabilitated, they came back to, to their... So, but the intention was that to, to keep you, you know what was impetished? I saw saintly people becoming criminals and criminals becoming saints. What I would like, Pitesh, to be analyzed by psychiatrists and by 
deep spiritual fathers together to collaborate because it's a matter of subconscious. Man cannot uh, uh, tell what he can become in certain conditions. The, we have, as Jesus said, in our heart uh, the good parts and the bad parts too. Uh, in our heart are all the, 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 the passions and all, in our hearts are all the good things, the same thing. Uh, who is man? That is important. And we passed through this. Uh, 200 years was not enough for me to live, to understand what uh, uh, I could be in certain conditions. So. And there were many people, good people, saintly people that fell. That they gave up because uh, some people can resist up to this point and others higher, but you cannot resist this situation, the pressure to be uh, at the limit of normal and abnormal. This is Solzhenitsyn, if you read it with attention, because Gulag was not the whole uh, imprisonment in Russia, just one special place for intellectual in which they used all the methods, but they were experts. Expert, the devil has expert people in medicine, in psychiatry, in everything. They used all these this. Now, Pitesh, to me, sounds yeah. like a living hell. It is a hell. And, and, and you use a very <coughs> frightening word. These people were demonized. And yet, Father, I've heard you say that your time in prison was a great grace for you. How, 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 did, how did the light of faith shine in such darkness? Well, uh, in that situation, it was very hard to say. Uh, each, uh, each one individually... I had my own temple. It, they, couldn't, they couldn't believe, couldn't control me. I was saying Jesus' prayer. I was inside of me. So I just didn't pay attention to that. But there were people who were not as spiritual. And sure, they were churchgoers, maybe, or, you know, this nominalistic uh, orthodoxy that we have too, not only in the Western part. That, uh, and uh, they fell, they fell. But uh, those who really uh, had God in themselves, they didn't. They resisted. So all the, these things. did so, your heart become a sanctuary? Well, Is that if it didn't, I couldn't have resisted. Yeah, it, it, uh, and I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one. The many who passed through Pitesh resisted. They, they didn't give up anything. They thought that we are already ah, done. We, but it was not. But this uh, uh, is an imp empire inside you. It's uh, that dimension of the church that saves you. That's why I said, don't learn about Christianity only. You have to live it because God is life and this personal experience. If you don't make personal experience, what is religion or unity with God? Because that is religion. It's religo from Latin, religo, God is contact between man and God. Uh, that is the, the, the word religion. But you have to experience that, mm -hmm. not only to hear and you can uh, you have the Bible, know the Bible by heart, but you don't know anything because you didn't uh, experience. So in Pitesh, it was very, very hard to to see the positive part. We were just survived. Survival was. But later they put me in uh, solitary confinement. And I was uh, in solitary confinement a long time. And that was my positive experience in, uh, of uh, prison. The solitary confinement was different than different. the Pitesh experience. Each one isolated. Okay. Because they had the idea that if the intellectuals are isolated without books, without paper, without pencil, they will become beasts. But doesn't happen that. Doesn't happen. It is, a, it is a glory to be like this because sometimes we are the slaves of the books. Uh, if you are outside, uh, uh, you are not yourself. You don't even ask, who am I? You, are make the, you read a lot. Uh, you are uh, made out of quotations, you know. Here and there, you are not yourself. Uh, but there, where was no perspective to, to, to go out, where just in between, uh, you were in between the, the four walls, uh, you had to go somewhere. 
uh, because uh, the human spirit is ex explorer. You have to go somewhere. Then uh, what happens to me uh, that I didn't experience even in my, my family that was very good Christian family. You know, churchgoers, they prayer, but they were normal people. I experienced there, I discovered myself there. Because you don't have time outside to say, who am I, and to, to meditate about yourself. You become yourself. That was uh, my positive experience. Founding myself, I found God too, because man is the, the, God is the seal of our personality. The icon of God is there inside. The image of God is there, but we don't realize that. So from uh, this point of view, imprisonment was very positive for, uh, for intellectuals. Uh, Eleven years, I didn't see a book. Eleven years, I didn't have a pencil or paper. My family, and I have my sister here in this monastery, they didn't, didn't know where I am. Uh, that is communist imprisonment. It's not an American prison. I, I told the journalist from Jackson here this, and he said, well, I think you and Solzhenitsyn, you have too much imagination. So, and I said, I kissed him. I said, I'm very glad because we are normal people. We are not normal people. <laughs> sure. Uh, the, yes, in prison, in, especially in solitary confinement, you find God there. It is in no other perspective. You have to. It's, e it's either find God or go insane, I would imagine. Yeah, uh, sure. You found, you found God because you are just with yourself there. Mm -hmm. You don't have another to talk uh, or other, other person. You are just you and God. And... Uh, we don't have in life, in the normal life, this opportunity. I don't know if these are the <coughs> correct words, Father, but in a sense, was the solitary confinement a kind of a healing process after Pitesh? It was. It was a healing process, Pitesh yes. was the violence, yeah. and the solitary was the healing? Is that exactly. It was a healing. And I think, uh, uh, I think God provided to me that, because I was not the only one, many... A category of people were isolated in this uh, because they wanted uh, certain people to become beasts. They, they believed that, that uh, if we don't have book, uh, you will be like animals. But it didn't happen. We became ourselves. And uh, that is, uh, the, uh, we have to become ourselves. Father, how is it that you went through all of this? and did not become a bitter or a cynical man. Oh. How, how did that happen? <laughs> Thank God, and God bless them. If they are, yeah, are still alive, some of them, I forgave them at that time. Do you know, there is a, sure, you have to experience that. When you suffer a little, you become uh, hateful, and you hate them, you keep revenge, and, when you suffer a lot, you forgive everything. Why is that? Well, Jesus on the cross was forgive them, Father, because they are they don't know what they do. It's the same that happens to you. You have the same feeling that they are insulting you, torturing you, and, and you look at them and you realize that they don't they don't want they don't know what they are doing. So uh, that happens with us, and uh, no one who passed through Pitesh wants revenge or no. We want, uh, we forgive them, and we want them to become, uh, to come to God and to become people. Yeah. So, uh, in this respect, is no problem. <laughs> I uh, I pray for them all the time. I don't know the name, their name of the doctors. What happened with Pitesh? Pitesh stopped. Uh, because one evaded and evaded from the country too and at BBC was something there about a special prison in Pitesh, uh, Pitesh called Pitesh in Romania and they stopped it immediately because in communism it, they kill, they torture but uh, they don't want anybody to know when when uh, uh, what to say, when this is known, they immediately find uh, 
what do we say in, in English language with a goat? Oh, a scapegoat. Scapegoat. Find a scapegoat, And yes. that happened because they condemned and they executed them. The director of the prison, the doctors, uh, one of them was even the doctor of the city there, uh, of the hospital, and they condemned all the wardens there. Everybody who knows shall disappear oh. because communism doesn't, they, they didn't want to have bad things in their archives. So when somebody, they are able to kill each other, and that did Stalin, Beria, and you know all of this, uh, not to have a bad fame. The only infallible uh, organization in the world should be communism. They wanted to create a good record, not to have bad things. Kind of a public record. image. Exactly, exactly. I see, I see. And that uh, Pitesh stopped, stopped, and everybody who knew more where this came, how started, they will disappear. They were executed, all of them. Did you meet other great men in Pitesh? Did you, did yes. you find men who... Well, yes, there are some saints there, and, and uh, they are almost all of them dead because I am 80 now, but some of them are still alive. And I found great people there. And Could you I, tell us one or two of them? It, oh, yes, yeah. It's one is uh, the priest uh, George Kalju. Maybe you heard about him in, the, in um, Washington, D.C. He is a priest now. And uh, there was one, uh, Valerio Gafenko. We considered him a martyr even uh, because he died in Pitesh. In Pitesh, there are 40 who died, but they didn't want to kill you. They controlled you not to have anything, any needle, anything to harm yourself. Because they, uh, they told me once, uh, because um, I was uh, questioned, and uh, they wanted something from me, what happened outside. And <coughs> I didn't want to involve people. And they put me on the table, and uh, one of them, Tsurkano, who was the devil, this was demon possessed. He's executed by them now. They executed him because he knew one of the, the prisoners who became uh, the leader of uh, this uh, re education uh, center. And he said, I don't care what you believe, what you have in your mind. What I want, I want you to compromise. Because he did, he compromised. So this is the devil. You want that he, they didn't want to kill us. The devil doesn't want to fill the heaven with martyrs. He wants you to die after you compromise, to lose your heavenly life and your this life too. So uh, that is the the, the satanic uh, satanic point in in this torture in in uh, Pitesh. They didn't want you to die. They want you first to dirty yourself, to, to uh, the people not to consider you hero or, uh, or uh, martyr. And then you can die anyway. Because, so that, that is, uh, here I, I saw uh, uh, that is Satan working. Yeah. Satan, uh, I mean, any, so many terms used for him, basically is the, is the enemy of the human soul. Well, sure, sure, it's the devil. I believe in the devil. I, this is not a principle for me. Uh, he is a person that uh, talked with uh, Jesus on the mountain of temptation. I don't have any doubt. And especially after I passed through Pitesh, I don't have any doubt. Because uh, there was one simple thing. You could accuse yourself that you did everything and they would forgive you. When you said, I still believe in God, in five minutes you were full of blood, was such a revolt against God and against faith. But otherwise, uh, I was witness there when somebody killed a Russian soldier and he didn't confess that, was in a wood somewhere there. Maybe he had something with him. And they, he confessed there. 
because I said there was a process to remember everything. And it uh, was like, uh, popping, like, like puppets, you know. They just uh, got up and they started to recite everything that they knew. And uh, he said that he killed a Russian soldier. Oh, that you confess, you are rehabilitated. You are not. When somebody said, I still believe in God, Phew. in a couple of minutes was... I, I discovered the existence of the devil. The devil was from the book until now for me. Uh, and uh, I am ashamed to say that even my theological preparation was uh, from the books. But I found the devil, the existence of devil in Pitesh and the existence of God in solitary confinement. Now, Pitesh is closed. Yeah. What is the devil doing today? How well, is the devil working? <laughs> Well, and the communism is closed, but I think the devil invaded American democracy. <laughs> yeah, no. well, no. The, 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 I don't want to, to be insulting and to tell you, but uh, there are very good things of democracy and freedom if you uh, understand it in the right way, but um, everything is permitted, everything is allowed. Nothing is uh, counts, you know. We, we can do everything because nothing is important. Uh, this is sa Satanism. And uh, uh, everything is relative. Uh, what is good today will be tomorrow bad in the universe. Or, uh, uh, this relativistic, uh, there's that relativism in which we live, this... Um, Anthropocentrism, what is humanism, that man is the center of everything. God is out of picture. Man is important. Uh, this is uh, the continuation of Satan, but, but, but he, he changed the methods. So uh, I think the Pitesh was a failure for Satan because it was obligatory, it was... Uh, it was violent, it was, uh, but uh, the, the Satan has other methods now. And uh, what are they? Well, uh, just to, to go in a public institution and not to be able to pronounce the name of Jesus, or in schools, and uh, because it's not constitutional, or. Uh, well, this is not a freedom. This is a persecution, but in another way, uh, more delicate. And because Satan today is not like in the Middle Age with the horns and tail, or uh, is a very perfumed and elegant person. It is at the level of our understanding and culture. Satanism is working. Uh, Satan is working in all the cultures uh, from the beginning and uh, we'll be working up to the end of the world. But it, uh, it, for an intellectual, Satan is in one form. Uh, Satan is working through theologians too, but in another manner. Uh, so Satanism is a principle that works in all the cultures and all societies. I would say that communism and, uh, and uh, Pitesh, uh, they were provided by God to strengthen our faith. Because look what is happening now in Romania. All the churches have loudspeakers outside. Uh, the, the, the average age in Romania in church attendance is from 16 to 40. Young people raised and educated in communist materialistic philosophy they uh, they are teaching now their parents how to pray, and but this is due to to, to the communism. And uh, I see a positive part, like in the Christian persecutions of three hundred years, up to Constantine the Great. Father, you said you you encountered the devil at Pitesh, you encountered God in solitary. Mm -hmm. When did you find yourself in all of that? Where I found myself there. But I think uh, I was the center of attention for both of them because uh, what is devil's work is to uh, separate us from God and what is God's work is to be united with us. 
and both of them, I was in the middle. So, because <laughs> in fact, I was the, the reality, the land to be conquered by both mm -hmm. of them. God always is calling to us to come back to Him, and uh, the Satan, that is his role. And, and the whole history of salvation is to separate us from God. I think God used the Satan in communism to bring a luminous uh, era that I believe very much now in, uh, in Russia, in Romania, in Czechoslovakia, Poland, in all of these countries with their own religion, Poland with Roman Catholicism and uh, Russian and uh, Romanian. And, uh, I think God wanted, selected these people to to prepare them for something, for the light that is coming. I believe very much in the spiritual era. Uh, we are in the third millennium now. And I think uh, in this millennium, the apologists of the church who will defend the faith will not be the priests, will not be clergymen, will be lay people who experienced uh, communism. Father, you spoke a moment ago about uh, the third millennium be a time of spiritual awakening and, and Yes, revival. I believe that very mm -hmm. much, I believe. I will not be here, but I believe very much. The, I know the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, very much has, has caught a similar vision of a time of a rebirth of Christianity and a mm -hmm. new time of, of going forth. Do you see uh, uh, some kind of a collaboration in the future, Father? between the Western Church and the Church of the East? Well, it should be. It should be. But, you know, I think uh, as long as we are separated, we cannot speak of a church. The church is one. And it's one Lord, one church, one baptism. For ecumenism for me, uh, I don't like this ecumenism now. That's why I'm not involved and I don't want to. Ecumenism is when the Pope in Rome and the patriarchs in Constantinople and Russia and they will kneel, will confess their sins, will recognize that we are sinful people and will ask God for forgiveness and that is the unity. It's not, uh, I am right, you are not right and this, I don't accept that. I think uh, the unity of the church is coming, but we have to be humble, to confess our sins, to repent, and to ask the grace of God to work upon us. Then we will understand this unity and diversity because God created uh, individuals, uh, the separated universes, and uh, love is the unity, and love is a bridge that unites two personalities. Uh, each church will keep her own personality, and but we should accept. Uh, uh, sure, the Protestant denomination will understand that uh, the primeval church, the church, uh, apostolic church, should go back and to 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 be like uh, because it was founded by Jesus. The sacraments have a foundation in the scripture, the word of Jesus Christ. So we have to come back to a sacramental church. Are we moving in that direction? Father? Yes, we are moving. I, I talked with Father Gilquist and uh, this uh, large evangelic group that became Orthodox. They read, we didn't go after them. I am ashamed, they came to us. They were looking for the church. They read in the second uh, century, in the third century, St. Athanasius, in the constitution of the apostles, uh, the existence of the sacraments and everything there. And they ask themselves, when this disappeared from us? Are we in church? Are we not in church? And God brings them, I think, brings them, but we have to love them. And one thing we recommend, that the Orthodox, in fact, brought in America this, don't we don't believe that we are the only one to be saved that will be saved salvation is not in my hands it's in the hand of god he saves who
whom he wants to. St. Paul said even the pagans will be saved because even if they don't have a written law, they have the law inscribed in their own heart. If they follow that uh, natural, so to say, or the, the given by God uh, idea of what is evil and what is good and they follow, they will be saved. So, Father, what, what contribution does orthodoxy make to the West? What, what is the gift? Uh, as I said before, is to change the perspective. The West, uh, having scholastic influence, uh, stresses very much the process of knowledge and intellectual, which is good because we, uh, God gave us the intellect. But we don't have to remain at this level because there is another perspective higher than the intellect that is the spiritual uh, the spiritual realm in which the grace of God is working. Uh, I would say the intellectualism is to ascend toward God, but uh, the spiritualism is God descends to you and uh, or showers you with his, uh, his spirit. And uh, we have to go in that realm of spirituality and to unite all these things. The practical things, the, so the, uh, the sensitive realm, the psychological, to the intellectual and uh, uh, to the spiritual. Because um, we, don't, we are not against nature, but we believe that we are supernatural. Not anti-natural, but supernatural. Christianity is supernatural, and man is supernatural, uh, supernatural uh, entity. You spoke earlier that as a child, uh, your parents did not put you in a special class for religion, no. but that they demonstrated it, they lived it. It, 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 was, it was a constant thing. It touched every aspect of your life. Do you feel that Orthodoxy's role in the West is not so much to teach it as simply as to live it, yes. to demonstrate it, to yeah, show it? It's a call. It's a call to persons to engage them in the process process of his personal experiences in God. Yeah. But this experience is not made individually, but in the context of the church, because uh, the Holy Spirit comes and the grace of the Holy Spirit is through the sacraments of the church. So we are calling them to come to church to have a sacramental experience. And you, as a, as a monk, in your community, in your habit, somehow this is impacting the world. I don't know how much impact we have. Uh, we always have uh, people coming to us here, praying with us. We don't preach too much to them. We have uh, uh, a guest house that is open to even to Jewish people. We have sometimes Jewish people coming to meditate, to go on the property, if they want to enter the church to attend services with us, it's okay. We never, we never uh, push them to anything that is not theirs because we let God to work. I don't believe too much in a uh, strong personality of the missionary. It's God working through us. We are humble, humble servants and instruments in the hands of God. Sure, we pray for the whole world day and night services here in our chapel. Uh, that's why we are building the monastery to be a spiritual oasis here, are for the whole church, for the universal church, not for ourselves only. Uh, we, uh, we pray for the mystical body of Christ because this is the church. Christ is the head and we are the members of the church. Some members are sick, wounded, uh, and, uh, but the vitality of this organism is the Holy Spirit and heals everything. Father, what advice would you give uh, the person who's busy trying to pay their bills and very busy schedules? And <coughs> what, what counsel would you give well, them? Well, St. Paul was a very busy person, and he said, pray without ceasing. And so, how does one do that? <laughs> well, he, he traveled a lot. He had a job. He, but uh, pray without ceasing doesn't mean to stay always in prayer. To have the conscience of the presence of God, to have the feeling of the presence of God. You are in the presence of God. Or, more specifically, to feel the presence of God 
in the infinite dimension of your personality in you. You in God and God in, uh, God in you and you in God. How does a person begin that spiritual journey? That is Jesus' prayer. That is hesychasm or the Jesus' prayer. Uh, they don't have to, to say many things, but they instinctually they say, Oh, Lord. You, you can say only, Oh, Lord, or Oh, Lord Jesus Christ. If you want to say, Have mercy on me, a sinner, it's good. If you don't have time, don't say it. Just pronounce the name of Jesus. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, that is a permanent, uh, gives you the presence of God. If you have a dialogue with God, and I recommend very much to use your plain words, uh, not only the official prayers in church, but your plain words, Lord, look at me, I'm here. The children are praying beautifully. Lord, thank you for a sunny day, or thank you for mom and dad, keep us as we are. And uh, We have to become like children. Tell God that you are hungry, that you are making a sandwich, that uh, you are going shopping and everything. And this dialogue will bring to you a permanent feeling of the presence of God, and that is prayer. Prayer is not as much as you read. Prayer is a um, um, uh, um, spiritual state in which you feel the presence of God in you. This is pray without ceasing. And I think this resolves everything in the Western world, in this busy world. Yeah, sure, you are working there in the factory, but you can say, oh, Lord, look at me here. Yeah. <laughs> so God bless my children and my co-workers here. Can we bring God to the world, Father? Well, sure, God is in the world, but uh, we have to bring God to the persons uh, because uh, the world is just an ambient uh, God created first the universe and then created the man, the crown of all creations to be to take care of this universe. And uh, uh, God is in the world. Uh, his fingerprints is in everything, in a bird, in the blade of grass, in a flower. But God is, uh, we have to, to bring uh, God in the heart of people because God created people to be temples of the living God, consecrated churches of God. We have to do that. Sure, we have to desire that and to pray for that. <laughs> and to see in every criminal a candidate to sainthood, to holiness. That's a great, that's a great act of faith. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Sure, they are God creation. God loves them and waits for them. Does he ever give up on any of us, Father? Does Jesus ever give up on any of us? Oh, no. <laughs> he will never. <laughs> Not sure. No, he loves so much. And, and uh, the children sometimes are afraid when they say, God is looking you, at you. You are in the presence of God. Well, but I'm afraid. Don't be afraid. God doesn't want to to catch you off guard. He's looking at you because he loves you so much. Like mom looks at the baby. He cannot take off her eyes. The baby, God looks at us when we sin too. But he is so patient and loving and the parents should, should understand that even when the children are sinning and uh, they are their children. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you. Thank and may you. God bless your work, and uh, may paradise consume you. Is that the line? Well, yeah, Father Cleopa, my spiritual father, yeah. said, may paradise <laughs> consume you. <laughs> that sounds very good in Romanian. Say it for us in Romanian. Uh, when he saw somebody, may paradise consume you. <laughs> <coughs> it's a beautiful blessing. Thank you, Father, very much Thank for you. your time. I pray for America. Yes. It's a great country. And the love, God loves so much this country. And uh, I think, sure, the whole world is... But I think you have a, a special, a special mission to bring to the world. Not globalism, not. 
even if economically maybe the boundaries will disappear, but the individuality and personality and the cultures should be uh, kept because, you know, uh, this is not nationalism, it's e identity. And we have to keep identity. God made us a person, the person grows in the family. Each family has a specific. The family in the ethnical reality, the ethnical reality is brought in church. I say always to the Americans, if you become Orthodox, don't be Russian or Greek one. Come with the whole America, mm -hmm. with all your history behind you. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Be yourself. That is very important for salvation.